You know, it's the simplest things that are always kind of the hardest. When we went into the project of designing this coffee maker, we thought it was gonna be fast and easy, and it turned into a bigger monster than I thought it was gonna be. So in order to create this coffee maker, what we originally started with was the concept of a pour over coffee maker. You have the filter and grade up top that you can put a coffee filter in and then just pour over straight in the cup that you're making there, which is a simple concept. It's very easy to make a U that has a coffee grate in the top. But in order to create a product that people actually want and that looks cool and looks good, it takes a little more consideration than that, especially consideration for the printing process itself. So when we first started out, when we were designing this, we thought, oh, well, we're just gonna design it to print on its back and go from there. But you can't really do that. If this is gonna be a real product, you can't have fragility in this bottom spine right here. And if you were printing it on its back, you most definitely would. So we wanted to stay away from that, which means that we either had to print it on its side where orientation would jack it up because then you have this whole flat side against the surface of the bed, or you have to get more creative. Now here we're at Slant 3D, so of course, you put it on an angle. Designing around this both increases the surface contact area between the different layers so that you have a more robust part, also allows you to create a larger part on the same build volume. It also ensures that the outer surface finish is uniform throughout the entire part and piece. All of these are very small decisions in order to make sure that the product as a whole works reliably, looks good, and is also manufacturable. All things that you have to consider when making any sort of product. You don't just get to slap it up and immediately, ah, well, I printed it, it's great for everybody. If if you want to scale up, you have to consider every facet of it. Now, as far as the challenges about how we designed this, when we first went into it, we thought we were gonna actually do a rounded design, a smooth design, thinking that it'd be really easy to just print it on its back and go from there. But the problem with that rounded aesthetic is everything that we just discussed. You have the non-uniform surface finish. It's not very manufacturable because it doesn't print very quickly. And you end up with all kinds of artifacts on the back surface where it's contacting the bed that might not be desirable. So we ended up going for a much more enclosed and bulky kind of shape in order to create an aesthetic that was unique and different from anything else that was out there. There are a lot of coffee makers and there's plenty of minimalist ones and all the rest of it, but we wanted something that was uniquely printed. And printing is able to create both really chunky parts and really beautiful textured faceted parts. And when designing any sort of part, you want to use angles, you want to use chamfers. So we leaned into that with this design so that not only is it printed as an angle, but every other single part of it is a flat angle in order to reinforce that aesthetic. So we ended up with a really interesting overall look and feel to the whole thing. But then we ran into issues of the overall size of it all to where we had to refine it and crop it down and reduce material because it's a pour over coffee maker. You don't wanna use a lot of material because if you wanna mass produce something like this, you need to be efficient. So one of the simple things we did was just shaving off the back to again maintain those angles but reduce a lot of material from the original kind of square boxy look that we had initially, which was fine and looked okay, but was not as material efficient. So the question was how do we maintain that aesthetic without really killing it. And this is eventually what we ended up with. So once we had that, we were able to start rolling on this. Now, of course, in order to augment 3D printed parts, you are able to use third party components and you can use very simple ones in order to turn something that is otherwise not usable for this into something that's usable for this. A very simple metal grate improves it as a whole. And then on the bottom, we have this dome to where it's possible to have the funnel stick out and have a point going down so that you have a good clean drip coming out the bottom of the funnel. We even have a detent down at the bottom in order to hold the cup and to give more spacing from the top. Speaking of the top, this is a really interesting interesting situation because you have these fins up here. They both separate the hot coffee from the 3D printed part itself, which allows you to use the organic plastics like PLA and that kind of thing, which traditionally wouldn't come in contact with hot liquids because they just don't hold up well. But by using those fins, you effectively create an insulating layer and also a cleanliness area because now the liquid is able to run down the edges of the funnel rather than running down the outside of the coffee maker. But this is a perfect kind of best of all worlds kind of a situation because we're able to print this with a really low infill so that even though it is bulky, it uses very little material. So it can be produced at scale reliably in large print farms like ours, but it's also reliable in general. That bottom tab is not gonna get knocked off as we whack it and diddle around with it and do everything else we wanna do with it. So it can be a reliable consumer product. The fact that it's printed is a side effect. Nobody asks if their shoes are molded. It's simply if the product works and does its job, nobody really cares about where it came from. And this works and does its job. You're able to put the filter in top, pour your morning joe, and watch it brew the way you would with anything else that was out there. 
So hopefully this was useful to you. We like to design a few of these real products every once in a while to show how you can design a product like this so that it's reliable, good quality, and takes advantage of everything that 3D printing has to offer. Right here, this part would not be traditionally manufacturable because number one, it's a single piece, which you could never make with any other process. You'd have to stick together a bunch of different pieces. It's also really thick and chunky, where traditionally shrinkage of material would prevent something big and chunky from being made, or again, lots of molds that are effectively housings and shells that aren't really useful. This creates a really robust, really unique look and product that could not exist any other way. And that's one of the true advantages of printing is that it's, since it's a new technology, you have all kinds of new opportunities to create something that never existed before. Have a great day, everybody.